Hello everyone and welcome to the Starseed Dragon channel. Today we are going to do a, a tarot review on the Elemental Oracle Alchemy Science Magic by uh, Stacy DeMarco. Artwork by, uh, I'm going to mess this up, Kinga Britsch, Britsch, Brit, Britschke, Britschke. It is an oracle deck. And I believe it has, let's see, 44 cards and a guidebook. And it comes in this holographic um, deck. I thought that this would be a great deck to review. Um, so let's open her up and see what we've got going on in here. Let's see, the book has tiny, tiny prints. And... It looks like um, they're just numbered, so we don't have any particular suits. So we'll probably do a few videos just going through each one of them um, individually. And I will read the, um, the definitions of each of them. So as you can see, they're a couple of pages long. So... This might turn into a few, um, a few videos. So let's see. We've got a download your free Rock Pool Oracle reading cards app available now. Hmm, interesting. And here are the cards. So let's see what we've got going on here. Ooh, they're sparkly. Very sparkly silver um, edging. And this is the back. It's the front. Let's see. Before I take the tapey stuff off, let's just get the handy dandy measuring tape. And they are five inches by um, three and a half inches. Or um, looks like. 13 and a half centimeters by do, 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 nine and a half centimeters. So uh, there we have it. They're a good size card. Not too bad. Um, not too bad. I really like that shiny silvery edging. That's really a nice touch. Okay. So Let's just get going here. Let's see. Interesting. They are a complete picture all the way to the edge. Looks like almost beyond the edge there. So let me just get a closer, oops. Let me get a closer view. Okay, and let me just get my reading glasses on so we can see what the definitions of these are. So we start with number one, north. Expansion, be guided, but do your research. Focused and honesty is needed to overcome obstacles. You know you know, you know your true north. So be brave about the next steps. We may have a number of purposes in life, not just a single one. It is time for true adventure. Word of power. Boreas, Greek, god of the north wind. North is one of the cardinal directions and in witchcraft, one of the guardian directions. Traditionally, north has been associated with ice and snow, and the north wind is considered to be the coldest. The Arctic Circle is large and passes through Norway, Sweden, Finland, Russia, Canada, Denmark, Greenland, Iceland, and the Arctic Ocean. There has always been a certain romanticism about going north on adventures. 
during the peak years of the Age of Exploration, the exploration of the North Pole became almost a public mania. Perhaps the greatest adventurers of the ancient world and the most northerly were the Viking peoples. To Viking means to go exploring. The North has connotations around finding our true essence or pathway. It can even be a referral to finding a person who gives our life meaning. Finding our true North indicates we have found a profoundly right path and a direction that is authentic for us. So strongly is North seen as a guiding direction it is the one used to indicate direction on maps, usually with a single arrow. North is one of the quarters called in certain traditions of witchcraft to purify or protect a space. People may call upon the guardians of the North or the Northern is a way of unlocking the protective energies of the portals of that element. Element is air. Beautiful. Next card. Number two, South. Adventure, take a risk, but an educated one. Do or see something you haven't before, as experiencing something new will help to clear your mind and give wonder to your heart. Look carefully at your plan. Something may be amiss. The situation may have a happy medium. It is not all or nothing. Words of power. Nosha Notos, ancient Greek southerly. The south in some ways has a slightly bad rap. The term it could go south means something could go wrong and plans going awry are often referred to in this way as it is the opposite of north, and north was often seen as the right or sure direction. It's easy to see why. The global south used to be a place of unknown territories, a kind of terral nullis. To travel south from the northern hemisphere is, as an explorer was to be courageous and to break boundaries. In the 1800s, much of South America had still been unexplored, and Darwin's voyage to Hamas Beagle in uh, 1831 caused a sensation back in England when his floral and fauna samples were scientifically examined. Australia was named from Terra Australis, the hypothetical Southland described on maps from the 15th century onward. South is one of the quarters called in certain traditions of witchcraft to purify or protect a space. People may call upon the guardians of the South or the Southern direction as a way to unlock the, perfect, the protective energies of portals of that element. Element is fire. Okay, next card. Number three, East. Beginnings. Worry not, a new dawn is breaking. Let go of the old and embrace the new. Flow forward without heaviness or anxiety. New ways of being are called to you. Speak up with a clear voice. Do not resist change. Word of power, Oster, ancient Norse east. In the ancient world, to go east meant to go somewhere new and exotic. The sun rose in the east, so the direction heralded new beginnings and fresh starts. As the east was associated with the air element, it has come to mean a much more cerebral destination or way of processing. The East was a place to find our, your fortune, a different way to be um, and innovation. Eastern religions 
Buddhism, Zen, and Hinduism, for example, were a completely different paradigm from those of the West with different emphasis and processes. East is one of the quarters called in certain traditions of witchcraft to purify or protect a space. People may call upon the guardians of the East or the Eastern direction as a way of unlocking, unlocking the protective energies of portals of the element of that element. Element is air. Beautiful. These are gorgeous cards. Nice pictures. A lot of people prefer um, uh, drawings as opposed to pictures, but these are quite beautiful. Number four, West. Completion. Every cycle comes to a close. Do not resist the end of something because the end heralds a new beginning. Complete and project. Be a finisher. Be not afraid of death. It is a part of life. Word of power. Vester. Ancient Norse. West. West is one of the cardinal directions. It is the direction in which the sun sets and so, traditionally, in many cultures, it was linked to death or the underworld. For example, the, Egypt, the Egyptians felt that west was the direction of the underworld and the afterlife, which was not considered to be a negative place, and in certain cultures, interred bodies faced west or their feet faced west. Other sacred places such as Mecca are westerly. In Buddhism, the West leads to enlightenment. The idea that a westerly traje trajectory leads to wisdom or higher enlightenment is one shared by the Norse and many other pagan pathways. It is a powerful direction in which, because of the Earth's rotation, most winds blow. West is one of the quarters called in certain traditions of witchcraft to purify or protect a space. People may call upon the guardians of the West or the Western direction as a way of unlocking the protective energies of portals of that element. Element is Earth. Beautiful. Next up is card number five. The Equator. To make equal, find the balance in your life. Equality among people is a worthy goal. You are worth it. Do not compare yourself to others as this is a useless task that only leads to unhappiness. There can be a happy medium. There doesn't have to be an extreme reaction all the time. Word of power. Equare. Latin meaning make equal. The equator is the center and equal point of any spherical planet or body, including the Earth. It is the midway point between the geographical poles. On the Earth, the equator is about 40,075 40, kilometers long, of which 78.8% lies across water and 21.2% over land. Importantly, the equator assists with navigation and mapping as it is the major uh, latitudinal line. Our planet Earth bulges a little at the equator. The average diameter of Earth is 12,750 kilometers, but the diameter at the equator is about 43 kilometers greater than at the poles. Because of the lack of tilt, the temperature at the equator does not change much according to the seasons and remains a very at a very close balance. The equator passes through countries such as Indonesia, Uganda, Gabon, Kenya, Somalia, Ecuador, uh, and Brazil, and the oceans of the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian. 
when we seek equality and energy of the equator is a powerful addition to our workings. Element is fire. Interesting. Number six. Oh, that's pretty. Sun, light, <clears throat> be grateful for what you have right now. Every day brings new possibilities and opportunities. Concentrate on building your vitality and health. Shine a strong light upon the dark corners. Honesty and transparency, transparency are vital at this time. Word of power, soul, ancient Norse, sun. It is not an exaggeration to say that without the sun, <clears throat> most of life would perish. This fiery star at the center of our solar system is also central to our survival. We orbit around the sun and it is by far the most definitive and important source of elemental energy for our planet. The sun brings us light and is 85% brighter than most other objects in the Milky Way. A big ball of hydrogen and helium, the heat is radiated outwards from its core. We can see the sun's atmosphere, the coolest part of the sun, when we see an eclipse. Fascinatingly, the sun it <coughs> has magnetic fields flowing across it at <clears throat> that very in time and location. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just had to have a drink of my chai. Um, an 11 year old, an 11 year solar cycle is the most prominent variation in which the number and size of sunspots waxes and wanes. Such has been its uh, influence and vital importance that the sun was recognized by ancient peoples as one of the first deities just as itself. Later on, solar deities were recognized and many polytheistic cultures had powerful sun gods. The sun was regarded as a masculine energy. The moon is regarded as feminine most likely due to the sun's fiery and extroverted and extreme nature. The sun or the seasons on earth are directly influenced by the amount of sunlight a place receives and at what angle. Winter days are short and winter nights longer as the angle of the sun is lower and more acute, which gives less heat and light. Being deeply aware of and connecting to seasonal energies, such as the introversion of winter or the explosion of attraction energy in spring, can help us find greater flow and ease in everything, from creation of projects to the conception of a baby. Element is fire. Beautiful. Next card, number seven, the moon. Oh, that's a pretty card. Darkness, there are cycles to everything and a season for everything. Do not push yourself when the tides are against you. Do not be afraid of the darkness as the darkness is as necessary as the light. Rest and repair, the divine feminine in all her forms is rising. The time for introversion Stability and planning is here. Word of power. Le or, I Aisa, ancient Norse, illuminate in darkness. The moon has had an unshakable pull on human imagination since we were able to stand up on our hind legs and look at it. Some of the earliest cave artworks feature it, and it has been particularly linked with feminine energies and the feminine divine. The typical human menstrual cycle length is the same length as a lunar cycle. We know the, 
lutensing hormone, lut means light, that triggers ovulation is highly triggered by all light, but especially by moonlight. Goddesses, goddesses of the moon are featured in almost all polytheistic religions and many such as Diana, Artemis, Selene, Changzi, Changzai, Arunrad, and Rati are all still worshipped today. Moon energy is flowful and changeable, just as the moon's gravitational pull influences the great ocean tides. It is also stabilizing. After the Big Bang and the formation of planets such as the Earth, our planet had no moon. It spun wildly, which meant very short days and nights, and it was quite unstable, resulting in extremes of temperature. It is believed that a Mars-sized planet collided with the Earth, the impact of which sent chunks of the planet off into orbit and gradually formed our moon. The moon began to have an effect on the earth with its gravitational pull slowing the rapid rotation of the young earth and giving it greater stability there are less speed wobbles among the many coincidences of this um, days and nights become longer and more consistent and distinct seasons were born these seasons tempered the extremes of the planet and it became one that eventually harbored life. These facts illustrate how we can be personally affected by the moon and seasons. By following the moon's cycles and working with them, we can discover a new layer of stability within body, mind, and spirit. Elements is air. Beautiful. Next up, let's see, where are we at? Well, it looks like we're sitting on about 23 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and um, end the video here. And we will start up our next video um, on number eight, fire. And I hope that you're enjoying this. If you are enjoying this and you would like a deck of your own, there is an affiliate link in the description box below. Other than that, I will see you on the next video. Bye.